Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to be trying out the brand new reformulated Makeup Forever HD Skin Foundation. I have detailed timestamps listed down below in case you wanted to skip ahead to anything, but today I'm going to be covering the claims of this foundation, application using both a brush and a sponge, natural light swatches, natural light check-ins, as well as waterproof and sweatproof testing. Now that all of that's out of the way, let's get started. Hello, good morning. It is 5.41 and we're here. <laughs> I am really looking forward to today's foundation wear test. It is the brand new reformulated Makeup Forever HD skin. So it was previously the Ultra HD. It was previously the Ultra HD foundation and now it's been reformulated and rebranded as the HD skin. But I guess it was like two other foundations Prior, so they just keep reformulating and re-releasing this foundation. I I'm a little nervous <laughs> about trying it, even though I'm really excited about it. I'm a little bit nervous about trying it because I do really like the previous Ultra HD foundation and I've been reading some of the things and the claims about the new reformulated version and it seems like it's a completely different foundation, very matte, not very good for dry skin, but it's fine. We'll try it out. That's what these wear tests are for. I changed my background a little bit. I moved my flowers to my skincare fridge and I have replaced my previous coach makeup bag with a new makeup bag. My brother and his fiance asked me to be part of their wedding party as a bridesmaid and they gave us these cute little makeup bags and it says, will you be my bridesmaid on the inside and the champagne glass. It says bridesmaid on it. I have my hair clips sitting in and it also came with a little bottle of champagne and a cute little scrunchie that says I can't tie the knot without you. But getting into what you're really here for, which is the foundation wear test. This is the Makeup Forever HD Skin Foundation. This is the new packaging. It seems smaller. I'm used to their packaging being a lot longer, but that's that's not really a big deal. And then you have the new bottle, the cap is made out of some recyclable product. So I think you can recycle the cap now and the glass bottle once you're finished with it. I do really enjoy this packaging. I think it's cute and kind of unique with the cork kind of cap. Previous packaging compared to the new packaging. The reformulated HD Skin Foundation is $43 and you get one fluid ounce of product which is pretty standard for a foundation. There are 40 shades in this range and it is medium to full coverage. It's a natural finish that's supposed to blur and cover imperfections. It's supposed to be indetectable from your skin and what is foundation. It's also supposed to be waterproof and sweatproof and long wearing up to 24 hours. It's not supposed to cake or settle into any fine lines. And it is best for normal to oily skin, which I did not realize when I was purchasing the reformulated version. I thought that it would be good for all skin types like the previous HD foundation was, but I used an extra hydrating skincare routine this morning to try and combat whatever dryness this might have so that I could give it a fair wear test. As for shade matching, Sephora did have a couple of card inserts where they put their pictures that tell you how to match yourself to the HD Skin Foundation shades. They have changed what their shades were previously in the Ultra HD Foundation. So if you knew your shade in the Ultra HD Foundation, it gives you a new number for the new HD Skin Foundation. Based on my previous shades of R230 and R250 and the other Makeup Forever foundations that I've tried, they recommended that I go with 1R12 R230 in the new HD Skin Foundation. So I'm going to show you some swatches of what this looks like compared to some other foundations. The new Makeup Forever HD Skin Foundation in the shade 1R12, formerly R230. Makeup Forever Ultra HD Foundation in the shade R250. Makeup Forever Self Setting Concealer in the shade 25 Sand. Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation in the shade 2N. Kosas Revealer Foundation in the shade 120. Ilia True Skin Serum Foundation in the shade 1 Formentera and the Rare Beauty Liquid Touch Weightless Foundation in the shade 160C.
I forgot that I have the Makeup Forever Watertone Foundation, so I wanted to include that shade in these swatches as well. This is the Makeup Forever HD Skin Foundation in the shade 1R12. Makeup Forever Ultra HD Foundation in the shade R250. Makeup Forever Self Setting Concealer in the shade 25 Sand. And the Makeup Forever Watertone Foundation in the shade R230. It says to apply one pump to the back of your hand or directly to a brush for medium coverage and to get higher coverage you're supposed to use a sponge to build up in areas. So I am using my Haley's Beauty brush and soaking up the one pump that I had on my hand and I am just going to start pressing that in to my face. I'm working that one pump around. It did say to try and stretch the foundation before going in with more. So that just means trying to spread the amount that you picked up on your brush all the way before going in and adding additional foundation. I used the entire pump that I had on the back of my hand to cover this half of my face. I don't believe that I have very much, if anything, left on the brush. So here is what that one pump looks like versus no foundation. I think so far it's done a pretty nice job at covering my redness and some of my scarring. I would say that that was a good medium coverage off of that one pump. I would personally go in and still continue to build up on some of my more apparent issues. I think it's really just enhanced those areas over here with a nice like veil of coverage. It's like a nice filter of coverage. I don't think that it looks heavy. I think that it's matching pretty nicely to my skin tone. I don't think it looks overly heavy right now. I am going to use the sponge on the other side and see what that looks like and then I'll compare both sides. So I am taking one pump and I'm using a clean Billion Dollar Brows sponge to apply that. The sponge did a surprisingly good job applying this, I think. It did eat a little bit of the foundation. Like, I do notice that I went through the foundation pretty quickly. The coverage that it gave, it's like a full-on medium coverage. I almost think that I got better coverage with the sponge than I did with the brush. Okay, so here is what one pump using the sponge looks like compared to one pump using the brush. I really do think that I got better coverage using the sponge than I did with the brush. I think that there's some spots over on this side that I would like to cover up besides just like the, the spots that I would like to cover up. But like around my texture and my pores underneath my eye over here. I think it looks a lot better with the sponge. I've been having that a lot lately. The last like three foundations I've said the sponge is better, but truly with these foundation formulas, the sponge really has been the way to go. I didn't pump out a whole pump this time. I just did about a half pump and I'm picking that up with my sponge. So I built up the side over here using the sponge. And from a distance, I'm really liking the way that it looks coverage-wise. It looks very nice. It looks more on the natural side, I think, than some other foundations. You know, it's not very luminous, even with my routine that I used this morning. It's a little bit reflective from where my lighting is. But outside of that, it really is a more natural matte finish, which is fine. I think you'll know what I'm going to say before I even say it, because I don't know how you could miss this but in the time that it's taken me to apply the foundation to where we are now the shade has turned I think that it looked pretty good going on but as it's had time to sit and dry down I don't think that this matches I think that this does look like it's drying down to more of a summer shade for me it does just seem like it's a little bit deep for my regular skin tone. So I'm going to take just a little bit more and bring it down my neck so it's a little bit more uniform. Hopefully just whatever's left on the brush will be enough. And I'm also applying it to my ears so that my ears don't look too far off. But like you can see the difference between my hand and the skin on my face. So I wouldn't necessarily say that the shade matches as well as I was kind of hoping 
than it would. So I'm going to go and do the rest of my makeup off camera and I will jump back on here and show you the finished look and give you some of my preliminary thoughts. Here is the finished makeup look. I have everything that I use listed down below in the description box in case there's anything that you are interested in checking out as well as brushes that I used. It took me about an hour to finish off the rest of my face and I think that as the time wore on while I was wearing it, I came to like the foundation a lot more than I did originally when I put it on. I think that as it warmed up to my skin, it does look a lot better. I think the shade is still off, but I think with the rest of my makeup on, it doesn't look as bad. My initial thought when I turned the camera back on after I finished filming and I saw everything all together, I thought I looked like a supermodel. I am really loving how everything applied on top of this foundation. I'm loving how everything looks. I did use a more hydrating base to prepare for the matte foundation, but I think that that really helped. I think that if I didn't do that and I just had my dry skin, it would not look nearly as good as it does right now. I used a little bit of a cream highlighter just on the high points of my cheeks, and I used a couple of dots of the Makeup Forever concealer just under my eyes and around my nose. On a regular day, I wouldn't even have done that, but for the wear test, I wanted to see how the Ultra HD concealer wore alongside the new HD Skin Foundation to see if the products paired well together. But on a regular day, I think that the coverage and the way that it was looking was just fine, but I am happy with how the two paired. My pores do look really blurred. My texture looks really smoothed over. The a little bit of heaviness that I saw, I was able to blend that out just by having additional products on top of it and spending a little bit more time with the sponge blending out that area. It doesn't look like it has creased or caked or settled into any kind of lines. I don't use any powders or primers or setting sprays during these wear tests to see how the foundation itself actually wears. Everything has set down. I was able to blend well on top of it. I didn't notice any kind of catching or patching up or anything like that. There was no lifting when I was applying the other products. Everything has just kept really nicely where it was meant to be. I'm noticing a little trouble around one of the dry patches on my blemishes right now, but that isn't the end of the world. I think that as far as foundations go, this one has done the best at covering up the scarring without needing additional help in that area. While I really like how my skin is looking, I definitely think that this is a little bit heavy for everyday makeup. It does seem that for my personal preferences, this would be more of a special occasion foundation, one that I would consider wearing to a wedding, one that I would wear for something I needed to last all day long, like maybe a graduation, but this isn't something that I would wear every day. I really am enjoying this foundation. I don't mean any of this to sound negative at all. I'm very happy with what I'm seeing and how the foundation is wearing and there's very little critique that I can give other than the shade. If you are looking at picking this up, I definitely think you need to shade down because the shade is not quite right. It is 1220 right now and I am sitting in front of my window in full-on natural lighting, no studio lights or anything like that, and the foundation's been on for a little over six hours, about six hours and like ten minutes or something. I do still really like the overall effect. It does look good from far away at a distance, but up close it definitely looks heavy. Now that could be something to do with my skin type being a drier skin type, but for further days that I am wearing this foundation, I do know there are changes I can make to make it look better. It's looking the most heavy in the areas that I also put the concealer. Now I mentioned this morning when I was putting the foundation on that I wouldn't on a regular day have added concealer on top of the foundation because I felt like everything looked fine. I just wanted to see how the two products would work well together. I don't think they worked well together, but I also don't think I needed the additional concealer, so I'm not going to judge it on that, but I do want to note how heavy it looks in the areas where the two products are combined. So because of that, I think that the gathering that I'm seeing is more so to do with the product heavy situation with layering both heavy products on top of each other, because I'm not seeing that in other places, the, the heaviness. It still looks heavy, not skin-like, not natural, and definitely not undetectable. I've got wear off on my nose, I've got wear off on my chin, like I have nothing left on my chin. I don't see any creasing, I see some 
settling underneath my eyes but I don't necessarily think that's a foundation problem so I won't fault the foundation for that but I do see some stuff going on under my eyes that I don't typically see. I think that my blemishes look okay. It's not the worst wearing foundation on top of my healing spots and it's not clinging too badly. It's clinging worse to the spots that are fresher but the spots that are more in the healing state I think it's done a good job at not clinging to those patches and I think it's still done a really good job at staying covered. So six hours in I'm still really happy with how the coverage is looking and how the foundation overall is wearing. It is just about 6.30 so the foundation has been on for about 12 and a half hours. I'm going to zoom you in, talk a little bit about what I'm seeing with the foundation and then I will do the waterproof test where I spray my face and then see if the foundation transfers off onto the paper towel. Here's a close-up look of what the makeup is looking like at the end of 12 and a half hours. As I mentioned in my earlier check-in, it's looking a little bit heavy in the areas that I also put concealer. I think the foundation is still looking really good, especially after 12 hours and I've worked out and I've been just kind of doing a lot of stuff, not just sitting on the couch all day. So I think that the foundation held up really well throughout the course of the day. My pores and my texture still look really good. I do think the brush side looked a little bit heavier than the sponge side did, but I think overall both sides still looked really nice. I lost coverage on my chin and on my nose. There's no creasing or settling into the lines on my forehead. I don't notice any kind of creasing or weirdness around my smile lines. I did lose some coverage around my nose, which looks pretty unfortunate now that I am looking at it in the viewfinder. So that's something to be wary of if you are going to pick up this foundation. I think that it stayed really nicely on my breakout. I think that it covered really well. I think the coverage stayed really nicely. It was definitely very long wearing. There's definitely a shade discrepancy. So again, I would advise shading down. It's starting at this point to make my drier spots feel drier. They're starting to feel more irritated. So I am starting to touch my face a little bit more because I'm very much feeling those dry spots now. I think that at the end of 12 hours, the foundation has held up really well. I maintain that this for me would be more of a special occasion kind of foundation. This is not one that I would reach for on an everyday basis. If you're looking for medium to full coverage that you can wear because that's the foundation you like to wear, I think that you'll really like this. I do think that dry skinned people real dry skin people, not just like me where I'm like normal to dry skin, but like actual dry skin people, I don't necessarily think this is worth picking up. I think that there are other foundations that are probably better suited for what dry skin needs. So I am going to spray my face with some water and see if I can pat my face down with the paper towel and if there is going to be transfer. Okay. I believe that I am thoroughly saturated. I've got water droplets on here. I think that you can see it beating. Oh wow, it's beating off of me. It's not, um, that's really interesting. I think that it's gonna go really well. Like you can see it beating the way that it, it beads off of like waterproof or water resistance jackets. <laughs> like you can see the beads of water like slipping It did get a little bit of transfer, but where it seems to be the most beige toned instead of white does seem to be from like where I had the contour and bronzer on my cheeks. The foundation itself looks like it stayed pretty well. Let me just do some strategic padding. I mean, I'm getting very slight amount of transfer onto the paper towel. I would say it's pretty waterproof though. I mean, I'm swiping at my cheek where it was just previously wet and I'm not getting any kind of movement or lift off and with no setting spray or setting powder. Yeah, like nowhere that I'm touching am I seeing any kind of slipping or moving or problem areas. So it definitely seems like it's 
pretty waterproof and I did work out and some of my oils came through but it really just enhanced the wear of the foundation. So I would say if it's waterproof and my oils didn't affect it but I'm not very oily so I don't know if I can really count for the sweat test but if it matters I didn't have a problem with sweating. I think that for this one it's really just a matter of assessing your needs and what you're personally looking for. It's very comfortable, it's very long wearing. You saw it passes the waterproof test. I believe it would pass the sweatproof test as well. It does set down, it is not moving around. I'm sure I could continue wearing this for even longer. This is probably one of the best long wearing foundations that I've tried in the last six-ish weeks that I've been doing these foundation reviews. So truly, I really do think this is a good foundation and if you are in the market for one that makes the claims that this one does, I don't think you would be disappointed if you did pick this one up. This is the HD skin side and this is the original skin side. I think for today's wear test, it didn't wear as well over my active breakout site. I think that overall, on both sides of my face, my skin is looking really blurred and smooth. The new HD skin side, I do think looks more blurred and smooth, but it's really just a touch more. I think that the HD skin side is more full coverage, and the Ultra HD side looks a little bit more skin-like. My concealer was not cry-proof, so like where you see smearing and stuff going on. I was crying a lot today. Um, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. But just full disclosure, um, the, both foundations held up well from it, but my under eye did not. So that is what you're seeing with the black and the gray and the smearing and all that underneath my eye. It was crying, but the foundation held up very well, if that is something that you're interested in knowing about. I still think that this foundation is heavy for everyday wear, but I think that it's looking really nice in most of the spots. Just for fun, at this point of the night, since I'm going to go and take the makeup off anyway, I am going to try powdering here because I don't get oily, but this looks a little bit more wet than I typically get at the end of the night. Powdering it did seem to help the shine considerably, but I definitely think there's a huge difference on my forehead. I think it's toned the shine down a little bit on the sides of my face, but I don't necessarily think it's diminished it entirely. I still am enjoying this foundation though on its merits. It's very long wearing, it's waterproof, it's cry proof. And I don't know now that I've worked out a couple of times in it and I did take a hot bath and I was crying, but I did get really oily, which I'm still hung up on because I don't typically get oily. Not oily enough where setting it made this big of a difference. So that is something to keep in mind if you're looking for oil control. It did a much better job the first time I wore the foundation at oil control than it has this time around. It also did a much better job at covering my acne breakouts the first time I wore it than it did this time. So if it's going to be inconsistent wear, I'm not sure I recommend it as highly as I would have recommended it prior to seeing how this is wearing. Let me know, what did you think about this foundation? Is this one that you're interested in picking up? And have you tried any of the former Makeup Forever Ultra HD Skin 4K foundations. I know that I've been having very hit or miss experiences using their products. Anyway, that is going to be all from me today. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I will see you again very soon in my next video. Is that it?